hello. The title of this demonstration is Layers in Action. So what I'm going to do is take one of my emotional shape doodle drawings that um, you can see in another video that we just did. And I'm looking for composition. So I think this is kind of interesting. Got these overlapping shapes, these three shapes up here. Um, I could do this one and enlarge it, or I could rework some of those shapes. It was connected to anger and build a, a structure. Um, still thinking about which one I want to do. And but the tricky part of increasing a small study is here we had this loose thing that we did spontaneously, how to maintain the spontaneity when going from small to large. That's always the trick. So I'm going to do some things to the canvas before I even draw the composition that I think are going to be helpful. And the first thing I'm going to do, normal, I've taped this piece of canvas paper down. I used to tape it down with blue tape all the way around, but the color <clears throat> kind of distracted from the color in the painting. So if you want to border around your canvas paper, so let, let's say this turns out to be a masterpiece and I want to frame it. I'm going to need a little bit of a border. So I do this thing where I put my finger on the edge and my pencil here, and I'm just going to pull run my finger along that edge. I'm going to get a fairly even line and I'm going to do that. Now it gets trickier because I have my paper tape down. I'm going to have to just kind of guesstimate it over here. But anyway, this is a quick way without a ruler to put a border. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to get something on the canvas. The white is very intimidating and a lot of artists put a wash. I am going to do some Posca pen scribbling. Then I'm going to do a wash. I think this scribbling, what's going to happen, it adds um, an element of interest that when I'm layering, I'm hoping these scribble marks will show through. So I'm going to do this automatic writing going across the page and back, almost like a, um, a typewriter. You can do it however you want. Almost looks like an EKG. I'm just going to. So what happens doing this is it's kind of mindless. And I'm relaxing into the flow of the piece. At least that's my goal. And if you want to connect this to an emotion, you can. My goal was just to get this filled. Okay, so now I've got some thin line work on there. Now I'm going to put a light wash over this. I'm going to use this Indian yellow hue. It's already somewhat transparent. I'm going to use my large wash brush. So I call this, it's like setting the stage. I'm kind of setting things up. to build my painting on. Okay. So I'm adding some water and I'm just quickly going to coat this. I like that the Posca pen is bleeding a little bit. I've never done this before. So I kind of like that. That's softening it. Now, if I thought that was too dark, it's okay. But if I thought that was too dark, I could take a paper towel and I could blot it, I could lift some of that color. You know, I think I can even smear it a little bit with the paper towel. I can move things around. I can add more wash back in. Okay, I kind of like that. It's, it's pushed the Posca pen back a little bit. It's not as distracting. Okay, now, I can freehand, this is the tricky part, 
how do I freehand this drawing in here without being uptight? And I'm deciding if I want to do the structured one or, you know, I think I'm going to do this one because it's a little bit easier. And if it helps me to sort of remember the emotional state of doing this, I can. And I'm going to use charcoal pencil because when it gets wet, it kind of becomes a paint. And again, this is abstract enough and loose enough that I can make uh, changes if I want. I can make that bigger. And I like to do the continuous line drawing just so it, it keeps it loose and non-fussy for me, which is so hard when increasing this, the scale of something. And then I kind of need to not look at my sketch anymore and treat this as a whole brand new painting. Okay, so I've got my shapes down. I got some colors down. Now I need to start blocking out uh, some of the areas. So the colors, again, I'm working with limitations. I'm going to blend. This is a light background. I thought it'd be nice to do a darker Prussian blue with a light phthalo green, do some mixtures, see what I get. So There's my dark Prussian blue, my light phthalo green. And then I have choices here. Do I want the blocks to be lighter and the background to be darker or the other way around? So you can see I've got limitations, but I've got choices I need to make here. Um. I think I'm going to roll, you know what? I'm going to mix some of this with the Indian yellow because I know I'm going to get sort of this interesting celadon green that I like. So I'm just mixing directly. I'm going to use the brayer. So I'm going to try and incorporate all the tools we've been using this round. So I'm going to go brayer. And that's nice in there because I can still see uh, background showing through and I'm blocking around these shapes. Quickly. Okay, so I'm liking that and I think I'm going to Excuse me. I'm going to block it in even more using this angled silicone spatula. I can put the paint on thicker if I want. And I'm going to block this in right up next to those shapes, but I'm going to leave a little gap. In another lesson, that was called the, uh, I'm going to go to this one. This is better. The reserve line. It's just a little gap. And if you leave it, you see that bottom layer of paint showing through and it gives more depth to your painting. So let me see if I can do this clearly so you can see that. You can have it more solid in some areas and then here it's a little more transparent. And I'm mixing quickly, so it's not completely exact, but I just want you to get the idea. Okay, so I'm quickly blocking that in. Okay. Now I'm going to go to some of these other shapes. 
different colors. All right, so I'm gonna do mixtures of Prussian blue. I'll do some dark. And I'm doing that low 45 degree angle. And I'm going to mix some with the phthalo green. Okay, so I would keep blocking in. Now, one of the things that happens pretty quickly is my paint application is pretty much the same, right? So when you're working with abstract shapes, what's gonna be interesting is different textures, different paint applications. So I'm gonna bring this in, this is transparent. And I'm gonna see if I can do some different paint applications so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go a lot thicker. So I'm gonna go much thicker here. This is thinner, more transparent. I've got the background showing through. Okay, then I could do interesting things. Um, like I've got this palette knife with serrated teeth. If you don't have it, you could scrape through with a stick like Scraffito. So I might add, here, I'll just fill this whole thing in a textural element that then later when this is dry, I would come in and do dry brush or I could stain it so that the little grooves would have another color in them. I could make up my own uh, patterns. Let me go into this one here. Okay, then there's also paint side by side. So if I have this color next to this color, actually, I'm going to close that gap. They're side by side, they're on the same. Uh, visual plane. Okay, side by side. I could draw my own patterns in there. If I don't like it, I can smear it out. So playing with texture, playing with color side by side. Um, I'm going to overlap. So all of these things if I overlap this color here, this shape's gonna come forward, that's gonna be in back. And all of this just takes time and practice 
to get a handle on. Okay, so I'm gonna go like this. And if I go on top, kind of sculptural, it should push that that shape now. Here, we'll just go like this. That shape now, there's the illusion that it's behind this blue, whatever this is. Then I can come back and let's see. Sometimes I can even draw in the paint when it's still wet. I can come back with the charcoal pencil and add more marks. Okay, so this would just be layer one, blocking things out. I still need to block these out. And then I would probably come in, probably with a red. I'd probably come in, here, I'll just plop it in there so you can see what it looks like. I would probably come in with some of this color from the initial layer that I did. I like to bring that back up to the surface. I could even draw in a little bit more with my Posca pen if I wanted to. Best to do this when your paint is not wet so you don't ruin your Posca pen like I'm probably doing. Okay, so once this all dries, I can then come back and do some more dry brushing, but that's kind of the basic uh, layering process.